Hey everybody, Brian Von Vie here, back at it again with another set of D&D &D stories. Today, we're going to be talking about traps. That's right, all about the cool traps in the world. So, what is a cool trap that you have used? And leave one in the comments below, pass it along to somebody else, because you never know if they'll use it too. Do note, this one may be a bit of a spoiler for Dungeon of the Mad Mage, but it's to great effect, so listen at your own caution. My favorite trap is to have a strong enemy polymorphed into something inoffensive, generally a chicken, and isolate it in a room. Every party has at least either one murder hobo that kills everything on sight, or someone dangerously afraid of running out of food. So people always attack it, reverting it to its original form. It only ever works once per group, but when it does, it always creates a memorable moment. Here's one, the Leap of Faith, which consists of two pits with spiked floors. The first one is easily spotted and likewise easy to jump over, unless you are encumbered or wearing heavy armor. The other pit, however, is more sinister as it is covered by a trap door that is activated by pressure. Jumping over the first pit and landing on the other side will therefore trigger a nasty surprise. The mechanism of the trap door can be locked by turning any of the two torches 45 degrees clockwise. This is apparent for a character examining the torch holders. Turning the torch will temporarily deactivate the trap door and make it safe to stand on for one turn, as in 10 minutes, as the torch slowly moves back to its upright position. The trap door mechanism makes a sound when the torch is turned. The characters may hear this sound if the party is otherwise quiet. The mechanical sound could give a careful party a hint about the trap. Do note, this may be another spoiler for Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Listen at your own risk. Rolling Illusionary Boulder Indiana Jones Style Illusions require an action to check, and most players won't think to do so, so instinctively they'll run down the hallway from the boulder. Fill the rest of the hallway with several conventional traps that could be easily disarmed, but the players won't believe they have time to do so, such as poison darts, spinning blades, etc. Players will charge headlong through the traps because it's better than being insta-killed by a boulder. You could end it there and cackle as the players run free of the tunnel, only to see the illusionary boulder fade as they escape the tunnel, or if you're really evil, you can make the tunnel a dead end, or locked puzzle door so they feel like their death is truly unavoidable. Then slow the game down and give them pause to think about their final action. Really let them sweat. Eventually, they'll try something bogus that'll never work, like trying to smash the boulder with a single attack, and you can describe them swinging at nothing as the illusionary boulder rolls straight through them. Now, there is another variant of this trap in one of the levels of the dungeon where the boulder is real and is painted like an eyeball, but it has an illusory disintegrate beam shooting out of it. It's like a rolling Death Star, only the beam doesn't really do anything. Trailing onto this, another commenter actually said something that they would add to give a fun twist is for the players to be able to avoid it at the end of a hallway, at the last moment, and have them see the boulder rolling straight through the wall. Cue the party running at the wall, expecting to go through in platform 9 and 3 quarters style, while the wall is real and very solid. A quietly buzzing clay jar with the label bees gives off an aura of conjuration with detect magic. Opening the jar summons a swarm of bees to attack the nearest creature, typically the player opening it. Used it five times. Only one party didn't open the obviously labeled jar. Why would you open the jar anyway? Just throw it at somebody. Snow Zombies! Frozen zombies buried in snow that grapple and bite anyone that comes close. Alone? Not too worrying. But I put them on the banks of a frozen river. So now you have a choice. Fight the main enemy, usually a corrupted undead nature spirit or beast, in the snow, and risk being restrained at an inopportune moment, or fight on the frozen river that acts as a grease spell. This is surprisingly effective, especially given that the entire area is considered difficult terrain, and the boss usually manipulates movement and has ranged attacks. I don't mind a straight up trap, but I enjoy the 4E system of using traps as a part of a combat encounter alongside monsters. A crate nailed shut with the text painted on, WARNING! MAGIC SWORDS! DO NOT OPEN! Inside are 2D 4 plus 2 flying scimitars, which attack when the box is opened. My players encountered this, and despite the warning, they had to open it. Magic loot, after all. Ha <laughs> ha! They just barely dealt with the swords. 
In another room, they found a box labeled WARNING! MAGIC AXES! DO NOT OPEN! They argued for ages whether to open it. Well, they never opened it, so they never found out. But they regretted it for years, wondering if they'd missed some good loot. I also had another instance where they were in a dungeon full of rather tricky traps, in a passage through a mountaintop on the way to a dragon's lair. When they reached the exit that led to a high elevation narrow pass with a nasty drop on either side, right in the middle of the pathway, at a particularly narrow point, was a large chest. They debated about it for at least, I don't know, 15 minutes before deciding to very carefully make their way past it without touching the chest. But after they did, they almost immediately wanted to go back and open it. They regretted not checking out the chest for two years, and brought it up every once in a while. So two years later, with other characters, those same players had to visit the dragon's lair. They took a different direction and thus encountered new traps, but at the end, there was the chest. The same one that had been in the back of their minds for two full years. You're a sadistic man. They were so excited for another chance to open it. Two of them rushed across the narrow ridge, dancing through the snow and blowing wind, so eager they were to see what was inside. I had to hold back my laughter when I told them, Eh, hey, roll a deck safe. <laughs> As to what was intended with the axe box, honestly, I hadn't decided whether it would be more flying magical weapons attacking them or magical weapons they could use. I would have decided at the moment they opened it. You sound like a very sadistic DM. I like you, but I'm also scared of you. Now, I haven't done this one yet, but I have a dungeon idea where they're going to walk through a science lab where they're studying mimics. At the end, the power is going to go out, and they have to backtrack out with said mimics added in the previous room. I haven't had a chance yet, but the next time I DM, they're going to come across a 10-foot drop while exploring a dungeon. Nothing major, just lower themselves down and drop safely. It's going to be an illusion, though. The actual drop will be about 100 feet. For extra deviousness, a little while later, they'll find another pit. Obviously, they're going to investigate this time. This time, the trap will require a 110-foot deep pit, an illusion with a low DC. A false floor with a load limit of two characters with a high DC to notice isn't simply the bottom of the pit. The trap. Dun, dun, dun. This time, the illusion is of a 100-foot drop. And the best part is you can even tell them that they can clearly see the solid floor 10 feet below them, within the illusion, because the illusion is very easy to see through. They'll likely not follow up by investigating the floor. They chuckle, <laughs> thinking they've spotted your obvious inversion of the previous trap. Maybe they even take the precaution of sending one character down with a rope tied to him, but he's fine. The floor holds. But when the next guy follows, they're looking at a 100-foot drop. Two, electric boogaloo. Final twist. This time you need a 10-foot deep pit, as many glyphs of warding preloaded with magic missile as you have the sadism to want, an illusion with a high DC, the trap. The party comes to yet another pit. Oh, they're not screwing around this time. They check the floor for illusions. Ah, no pits as real as a heart attack. Let's just soak it all in. They poke the floor with a pole or toss rocks in. All good, in the hood. It's clearly just a 10-foot deep pit. They aren't stupid, though. There's something they're missing. They take whatever steps needed to cross that pit without going down into it. Except the illusion was on the ceiling. <laughs> it was hiding all those glyphs. They're activated by a creature passing through the air over the pit, targeting a random party member each. If they simply climb down and climb back up, they're fine. But they'll never risk such foolish behavior again. And so they suffer. Again. <laughs> uh, please don't use this trap outside of a meat grinder or trap centric game. It will only encourage your players to take forever to actually move through a dungeon if you do it in a normal game. You're also very sadistic too, and I like you, but I'm never playing with you. The bear trap. Pressure plate in the floor opens a trap door in the ceiling, releasing an appropriate number or species of bears for your party. Roll for initiative. Gelatinous cube in a dungeon with an obvious chest floating inside of it. Chest is actually a mimic the cube picked up wandering through the dungeon. The mimic's immunity to acid damage makes this right itself. Oh, you're sick. Party is fighting a hag. When she gets down to low health, she flees elsewhere. The party continues exploring until they find a badly injured woman chained to the wall that the hag had apparently been keeping prisoner. They free her and heal her. Then the disguise drops. She was the hag, now freshly healed. The fight continues. 
Good job, guys. You're all going to die now. In a couple sessions based around water being poisoned with corrupted celestial blood that would, given enough corruption saves, let me control some of the player's actions, I had my favorite trap. It was a bucket of gross water on top of a door so it would fall down on the person who opened it. <laughs> a player entered the building through the window, saw the bucket, left through the window, and then led the party in forgetting the bucket existed. He got a corruption point. And uh, that's a pretty good high school prank you got there, buddy. Quick lime dust blown out of multiple holes in the wall. Acid-like damage, but only things like wine or urine stop it from burning. Here's some bonus fun. It reacts violently with water and causes significant heat. My favorite so far is a lever that turns into a snake when you pull on it. The next room has the same layout for wear in the stone, as if someone took wide berth around the lever, with obvious footprints at a certain point. Pulling the lever drops a swarm of snakes on that spot, and every single time the parties I ran it for will use Mage Hand from that spot and get bit by the snakes. Pit trap filled with a gelatinous cube of the same proportions. It's an oldie but a goodie. If you want to be sadistic, put a powerful magical magnet under it. You're disgusting. Narrow hallway with one entrance. At the end is a portcullis separating the rest of the hallway from a pile of treasure. There is a lever next to the portcullis. Pulling the lever or attempting to lift the portcullis activates a trap. A hidden door opens, swinging to block the way the adventurers came in, and more importantly, dropping in, you guessed it, a gelatinous cube. You could also do a variation of ooze, because there's a whole bunch of those in the Pathfinder bestiary. Go take a look. Because the hallway is only five feet wide, the players block each other, and maneuvering is very difficult. The cube can engulf up to four PCs, so they can all die together. And to add insult to injury, the treasury they were trying to get into is fake. Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier checking in after the vid. Please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, ring that bell, and of course, leave a comment down below letting us know what kind of traps you actually took inspiration from today, or a trap you'd like to share with us. We love you all. Please be safe, happy, healthy, and make sure that you have a very good day. We love you all. See you next time. Bye for now.